<laughs> hey guys, so I checked this out. So um, after I published my first Black Mardima Gambit earlier on today, I've just had another really, really interesting um, Blitz game. I was on a Blitz tournament on chess.com and we came up with a, an interesting variation. So I thought I'd just uh, make a quick follow up and share it with you. So I'm showing you, I'm, I'm playing white. My opponent is rated about 1275 in Blitz. This is in a five minute tournament. So we have d4, d5, and then e4, inviting, so gambiting one pawn and inviting black to take. He takes, next move is knight to c3 and he defends the e4 pawn with knight to f6. So far, so normal. Next, we play f3 and offer another pawn. Black accepts, and then queen recaptures. All right, so far, so good. Queen takes the hanging pawn on d4, which we're happy about, and then bishop to e3, attacking the queen. Now, in the first video, if you've seen that, you'll see that the queen went to b4, um, then allowing white to castle long and place the rook on the completely open d file, uh, at which point it's uh, there's a lot of danger for that black king. In this game, there's the queen does something else. Instead of going to b4, she comes back to e5, pinning the bishop on e3. So um, I went ahead and castled anyway, occupying that lovely open completely open d file and then as usual the bishop comes out because uh, black has spotted that we've got our queen and our rook lined up on this diagonal and this square g4 is protected by the knight so why not go and grab some material so i had a little think at this point and went into capture the pawn on b7 where the rook is then on pre um, the bishop can't come into the that diagonal because it will just be taken by the g-pawn. The queen can't come to onto that diagonal to defend the rook because of my knight is controlling both of those squares as well. So um, black came in and took the loose bishop and now I had a bit of a think. So I, I realised that Queen at c8 would be checkmate if it weren't for this bishop defending that square. Okay, so and the and obviously I'm in check. I have to get out of check. So rook to d2, and then I, I figured that if queen e1 I could cover with my knight. If this bishop ever comes off that light square diagonal, then I have queen c8 mate. Yeah, so uh Black does indeed come down and I block with the knight. So now um, black doesn't have a good check, which is important. Queen can't take the knight because it's defended by the rook. Uh, queen can't just take the rook because the king will capture. So uh, black then comes in, brings in his other knight, and I decide to go in with a check. Now, this is, again, pretty deadly because the king can't move. The king cannot move onto the, the d file. So in actual fact, there are only a couple of moves. Um, we've got knight blocks, in which case I capture the rook with check. Um, but also, in fact, because I've got my rook still on that file, I could even take with the bishop with check. Um, knight to here to c6 is no use because the bishop just captures and we have another check. Um, so it's a pretty horrible situation, really, if you think about it. Uh, bishop blocks, then again, I can capture the bishop with my bishop. If knight captures, then uh, queen takes the rook with check, and then the only um, way to prevent... The only way to block it would be to move the knight back. Queen takes that, it's checkmate again. So whichever way you look at it, again, it's checkmate, and I... I have to say, I'm really enjoying this uh, this little line, so I'm going to go back to my blitz. I'm going to play a bit more, but um, this definitely fits the bill for the, the types of uh, 
openings that, that I'm looking to explore. Fun, dynamic, sharp, dangerous. Live a bit dangerously. All right, see you in the next video.